Hello. So in the previous video, we learned uh, two fundamental theorems of statistics, law of large number and center limit theorem. So the center limit theorem is particularly important for uh, statistical estimation and inference, but the law of large number is also important in many, uh, many fields, like also in economics. And uh, the most popular example of law of large number, application of law of large number to economics is the risk pooling theory. So risk pooling is, so in, in microeconomics, uh, uh, like insurance is understood as a means of risk pooling. So insurance companies make profit because they could pull the risk. So we are going, I'm going to show you a simple example, numerical example, and tell you how the law of large number applies to the insurance industry. Let's have a, let's have a look. So suppose that uh, you, you are paying $500 a year for car insurance. And simply speaking, there are only two cases, either you are involved in a car accident or not. So there are only two possible uh, results in a year. And if you have a car accident, then it will cost $3,000 to the insurance company. So insurance company must fix your car, repair your car uh, for $3,000. And it happens with 10%, probability of 10%, right? So I simplified the structure a lot. Premium is 500, but uh, the claim is $3,000 with 10%. And that means it we, we, can, we can calculate the uncertainty the insurance company is facing. Insurance company pays nothing but receives $500 if there, there is no accident, which is 90%. So 90% of the case, like uh, I'm just paying $500, but basically I'm not getting anything. However, it's, it's insurance. So if there is an accident, I receive more than I paid. So in other words, the insurance company is running a loss of $2,500. So they receive three, only, only $500 from me as a premium, but they had to uh, reimburse my claim of $3,000. So the company will get a loss out of it with 10%, right? It's a huge loss and 10% is not a negligible probability. If this 10% is the actual probability, that means one out of 10 insurance companies must go bankrupt every year, which is not the case in reality. So I will explain why, how the insurance companies uh, are actually how the industry is sustainable, uh, right? How this business can be sustained, even if there is a huge probability of huge loss. So that's the, that's because they could pull the risk. I am going to assume that there are 99 more policyholders exactly like me. So all 100, so to the insurance company, they are actually handling 100 drivers, car drivers or insurance clients, customers policyholders, and I assume that they have the same distribution. Each of them has 10% probability of car accident, which will cost the insurance company as much as $3,000. And additionally, I will assume that uh, they are independent of each other. So that means even if the first customer had an accident, it has no effect on the other uh, policyholders. So in that sense, they are independent, right? 
and then I will define x subscript i as the net profit from the i's policy holder. So uh, policy holder number one, number two, number three, da, 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 number 100. So for each of them, i is running from 1 to 100. And for each of them, you can calculate the net profit, which is either plus 500 or minus 2500. And then to the to the to the company x bar is the average profit from the one total like like total 100 insurance policies the company sells 100 policies and the average profit is x bar and now this is a new uh, random variable that we are actually interested in it's not about one single uh, insurance but it's about uh, the company as a whole so let's calculate the probability of x bar is negative so average profit is negative to do that so uh, as you already you can see this is about sampling distribution because the scale is 100 the sample size is 100 so what I do here is every year, every the the like one experiment is having 100 insurance holders each year. So one year is like a one experiment, or you can think it this way. So one insurance company has 100 uh, customers, and there is another insurance company which has a different set of 100 drivers, insurance holders, like that. So 100 as a whole is one experiment. In that sense, this distribution is the sampling distribution. So we may apply the nice theorems we learned. To do that, first thing we have to do is to calculate the mean and the variance of the underlying distribution for a single person, right? For a single insurance policy, calculate the expected profit and the variance of the profit. We did it in chapter 3 and 4. Okay, So pause the video and do the algebra. Okay, let me show you the answer. The answer is, the first, the mean is 200. I believe it's easy, easy enough to calculate. And then once you calculate the mean, the variance is calculated this way. Remember, squared deviation weighted by probability. So deviation is the outcome minus the mean 200. And then square that and weighted by probability. And then finally sum these two probability weighted squared deviations. Then the variance is, this, is, this number is the variance. 810,000 and then if you take square root it becomes a simple number of 900 I intentionally I made up number so that the standard deviation is 900 ah by the way you know uh, anyhow you are in in the homework uh, you can use Excel or calculator to calculate the square div square root of course it's not easy to do that by hand and, but in most cases, I will try to make the uh, simple number or like 100 is a, a typical common number. So because uh, square root of 100 is simple. So, uh, so like when you have square, when you need to do square root, use a calculator or Excel, right? And then, but, uh, so what we learned is the mean 200 standard deviation 900 but here when i say mean and standard deviation they are for a single observation when one insurance uh policy now now if you think of 100 average of 100 then the mean does not change but the standard deviation must be uh deflated by square root of n in this case 100 square root of 100 right 
which in the end becomes 90, only 90. So, then apply the central limit theorem after calculating the mean and the standard deviation. Then we approximate the variable to a normal distribution. So with like well-known parameter, we know the parameters from the previous algebra. Now you can calculate anything for x bar because you know the distribution of x bar. It is a non-standard uh, normal distribution. So we want you to calculate this, the probability that the company incurs a loss on average. That is, uh, that should be standardized by subtracting its mean and its standard deviation. It's not x but x bar. And of course, standardize the other side. Then you will get minus 2.22 and find the corresponding probability from Excel uh, corresponding to minus 2 to 2, right? Then you get 1.313. So you see, uh, now the probability is not 10%. If you had only one customer, the probability of loss was 10% from each customer. One customer uh, will give you 10%, but if you pull them, if you can pull 100 independent customers, after all, <coughs> the <coughs> risk becomes only 1.3%, right? This is the risk pulling, and this is how, uh, as I said, the insurance business is sustained. So they don't need to worry much about their risk, uh, right? Okay, then now I will give you a chance to do some exercise. Now everything, all the structure is the same. However, now I will consider even bigger insurance company. Actually, in reality, insurance company must have much larger number of customers. So, like, let's try this. When there are 10,000 uh, which, which, like the square root of which is 100, then what is the probability of loss for that uh, insurance company? Apply the theorems and uh, try to calculate the sampling distribution probability by yourself. Pause the video. Okay, let me do it. Let me show you how to do it. So we know the mean and the standard deviation for single person, single person, but we need average of 10,000. That's the difference. So as usual, as we did before, mean is the same, but standard deviation should be divided by square root of the sample size, which is uh, 10,000. 10,000, uh, if you divide it by square root 10,000, the standard deviation is only 9. So, in the end, we know the average of 10,000 follows approximately normal distribution with parameter 209 squared. Mean 200, standard deviation 9. So, <clears throat> you know everything about this distribution. Then just calculate again. Calculate the same probability again. Smaller than zero. If you standardize, it becomes standard normal distribution smaller than now. Minus 22. Minus 22 is super small number in the standard normal distribution scale. So if you look up the num probability in a calculator or whatever, it must be zero. Nearly, I guess, I don't know how many zeros will come more, but maybe mostly there must be a lot of zeros in this probability. Of course, it is not exactly zero. There must be small probability of the loss, but as you see, nearly negligible. So in the end, when you have like a large number of customers, 
when you have large number of pool of risks, there is no risk in the end. Nearly zero risk remain uh, in the end. That's the how how the in industry how how the insurance industry uh, is working. Also, maybe microeconomics uh, has similar theory like this. So then you can think of this theory that there. All right. Okay. Uh, and I have one more video. Maybe in the next video I will revisit the example of overbooking that we considered in chapter five of a binomial distribution. The last video will be kind of short and it is more like a numerical example and uh, a comparison with the theorem and a binomial distribution. Okay, see you in the next one.